The document Customs of Tagalog was written in 1589, wherein it tackled the practice and traditions of Tagalog during the Spanish colonization. About the author, Juan de Placencia is a Spanish friar of the Franciscan order. He came in the Philippines in 1577 with the first batch of Franciscan missionaries. He was the author of the first religious book, Doctrina Christiana. Hello everyone! I hope you had a wonderful day because today I would like to share to you a story about a beautiful lady who fell in love with a man who is not from her social class because the reason why Philippines was governed by a chieftain called Dato. Each population of Filipino was called Barangay and each Barangay has one Dato governing them. Before the story begins, I would like to share to you something about our past. Did you know that according to Juan de Placencia, Filipinos was categorized regarding whether social status as Mahardikas, Aliping Sagigiller, and Aliping Namamahay? Mahardikas were highest among the social class. They are not obliged to pay taxes or offer tributes to the Dato, however, they are required to help the Dato in times of war, and also pay 100 grams of rice to the Dato as their way of payment in exchange for the highest place among the social class. Aliping na mamahay, on the other hand, are commoners. They are free and cannot be sold, nor slaved. They have their own gold and wealth. And lastly, Aliping Sagigiller were the slaves who serves a master, and they can also be sold to other masters. The story began once upon a time in a far away land called Philippines. There lived a beautiful young lady named Maganda, daughter of Makiling Imoharlika, also known as Nobles. While the Dato and other men were preparing themselves for a war against colonizers, Maganda and her slave Sahaya had a walk to get something to offer for Matala. Tiyak nang tutuwa ang ating bathala sa ating alay. Batid ko rin. Halika na upang ialay ang mga ito. Apart from offering goods such as vegetables and fruits, women in the barangay also offers ritual dance for their badhala to ask for security and safety of their men. Decided to tell her people. 
feelings towards the son of their slave, her mother, Makili. Ina? Bakit, anak? Ina, ano yun, anak? May nais akong ipabatid sa'yo. Umupo ka. Gusto ko sanang malaman mo na umiibig ako sa anak na ating alipin. Nasisiguro mo bang umiibig ka sa kanya? Opo, Ina. Kung gayon, nais kong makausap ang magulang ng iyong iniibig. Masusunod, Ina. Because Makiling loved her daughter so much, she wants her to be happy. That's why he ordered her men to find the parents of whom her daughter loved. Kamahalan, pinapatawag niyo raw po ako. Tumuli. Tumuli. Nais kong pag-usapan ang tungkol sa ating mga anak. At anong mapaglilingkod ko sa inyo, kamahalan? After their discussion, that includes sedari, which is a Filipino tradition that when a man wants to marry a girl, he needs to give something for the parents. From then on, from being a slave, Makisig became a Maharlika. Years gone by, Maganda and Makisig had a daughter named Maria. But unfortunately, Makisig died in the middle of the war. And before he was buried, he was being mourned by the people for four days. After the death of her husband, Makisig, Maganda spent most of her time with her daughter, Maria. And they both lived happily ever after. The Philippines was portrayed as a community without a unified government. Their religious beliefs was not just focused of only one God alone, but they believed in the existence of heavenly bodies as well. I hope you learned something from our story. See you again. Bye-bye.